Okay, hello everyone. Uh, so it's time to start. Uh, so thank you for joining uh, my session today. I'm Kazuki Kuzu from Panasonic Automotive Systems. Uh, first, let me briefly introduce myself. So I have been working for four years on embedded and hypervisor related works. I usually participate in SDVEZ in automotive uh, grid Linux. So here is a uh, very brief introduction to my uh, personal life. I like PC game, uh, consumer games, and board games, and green tea. Okay, uh, let's uh, move on to the next page. Uh, this is the uh, uh, agenda for this session. First, I will explain uh, what this uh, session is okay. uh, what this session is about in the introduction. Next, I will introduce the structure and advantage of Part.io. After that, I will give a, a tutorial on cloud native development that can be achieved with Part.io. Okay, let's start with an introduction. I will briefly review uh, the trends in the automotive industry. As many of AGL members already explained yesterday, in recent years, the automotive industry requires a form of development called Software Defined Vehicle, SDV. Automotive software requires complex and advanced functions, and it is no longer possible to develop software for individual vehicle, even if only in terms of increased lines of code. With SDV, instead of <coughs> developing software to suit the hardware, software with the required functions is developed in advanced and deployed to the hardware as required. SDV can mean many different things. One meaning is that software is decoupled from hardware. A closer meaning is software first, hardware second. It can also mean rapid function updates. BATWIO is one of the most important technology to realize SDV with such a variety of meanings. BATWIO decouples software from hardware by abstracting hardware. And Cloud Native enhanced by BATWIO also provides rapid development cycle. As shown in the figure, AGL utilizes BATWIO on various environments, including hypervisor, non-hypervisor environment, Mars ECU, and cloud environment. So AGL has already been working on the realize, realization of SDV by BATIO. Okay. <clears throat> With BATIO enhanced cloud native development, the development and validation cycle can be completed almost entire <coughs> entirely in the cloud. And the software so developed can be deployed directly to the edge. This reduces the number of hardware requirements in the early stage of development and allows development of next generation software to begin without hardware. It also simplifies test automation. Now let's move on to the description of BATIO. BATIO is a virtual I.O. device standard developed by OASIS. A standard organization, the BATIO specification is currently version 1.2, and version 1.3 is still being developed. The standard document states that BATIO is a straightforward, efficient, standardized, and extensible mechanism for virtual devices. Here is a list of BATIO listed in the current BATIO specification. BATIO was originally uh, especially uh, useful for virtualization in the server industry, but 
it is also very useful in the automotive industry. For this reason, BAT-IO is also being standardized for devices such as Sonar, CAM, Multimedia, and Estras, which are not often used in the server industry. The most powerful advantage of BAT-IO is that it can be used as a common protocol for para-virtualization. If a particular hypervisor implements its own protocol for communicating with a virtual device, the device driver to use that virtual device will not be available to other hypervisors. Since AGL use BATO.io as a common framework, any hypervisor or SOC that supports BATO.io can be replaced without major changes to the upper layer software. This is critically important when talking about AGL virtualization. Let's get a little more uh, specific about the BATO.io framework. So this figure shows BATO.io embedded in guest learning on hypervisor. Normally, when an application uses a device, it uses a device driver for that device via libraries. On the other hand, guest OS with BAT.io uses a BAT.io driver instead of the device driver for the actual device. The BAT.io driver does not directly manipulate the actual physical device, but rather requests the BAT.io device, a server VM or hypervisor application to do the processing. But your device uses a device driver of the physical device via libraries, just like a normal application. A BATO.io, a BATO device from the point of view of the guest VM is the same as a physical device and the driver for the device is the BATO.io driver. <coughs> PCI, MMIO, and channel I.O. are specified for communication with part I.O. device, and these are used to initialize the devices. In addition, shared memory and part queue are used to request processing. Again, from the guest perspective, the part I.O. device looks like a physical device and communicate with its virtual device. The virtual common uh, communication is therefore independent of the actual physical device specification. For this reason, the actual physical device is abstracted and the guest VM only needs to communicate with the virtual device using the virtual driver, no matter what the actual hardware is. In other words, whether the hardware is cloud, AGL, different hardware, or Raspberry Pi, it can be regarded as an environment connected to a virtual device called BATO.io device that can communicate with a BATO.io driver. So far, I have explained what BATO.io is. From here, I will demonstrate a tutorial on how to build a cloud-native environment using BATO.io enhanced AGL. First, let me explain the purpose of the tutorial. The target audience is assumed to be beginner to intermediate level. The flow to build AGL on the cloud and verify that image on the cloud. Deploy that image verified on cloud to edge and verify that it works as is. The ability to deploy the entire image, including the kernel as is, will be useful for kernel and security-related developers. I have included the working code in slide so that you can try to reproduce it as much as possible. Here is the entire tutorial process. For building the AGL software, the AGL documentation site is helpful. As described on the page, on that page, 
the build procedure is as described in the slide and is also referred to in this tutorial. Let's start by preparing the build environment. Since the theme of this tutorial is cloud native, I use AWS as the build environment. I have included information on the instance I used, but I think you can also build by consulting with the cost and selecting core with fewer cores. I use Ubuntu 22.04 uh, as AMI. After starting the instance, connect to the cloud instance via SSH. The instance after first setup does not contain package necessary for building. So install them by referring to the AGL docs. After the build environment is ready, download AGL software. In this tutorial, we will build two guests. First is a back image. The procedure here is almost the same as in AGL docs. Uh, now that the source code has been downloaded, let's build AGL enhanced with BAT.io. Here, I select BAT.io X64 as a machine option and build the AGL IVI demo queue. I did not make any particular change this time, but it would be a good idea to add an application you need. It took 1.5 hours to build in my environment. Next to Quillback, build rice fish. Since the top level directory setup and level two installation were done earlier, all that was left was to get the AGL code. The build rice fish in exactly the same way as Quillback. This is a command. This uh, one may also take about 1.5 uh, hours. Next, build the edge host environment, including QEMU. AGL provides a recipe for easily building a QEMU KVM environment, which I use this time. We will use the Quillback recipe, so no recipe will be downloaded. First, configure the environment by specifying Raspberry Pi as a machine option and adding AGL KVM to the feature. And then prepare a layer to make changes to check the image built in the cloud. This page sets a guest image that will be initially launched with the edge image. We set AGL cluster demo queued as instrument cluster and AGL image Western as guest IVI. This page is for setting up additional config, uh, additional config file for starting guest VM. And this page uh, creates additional setting for starting the QEMU Although not listed here, BATIO block and BATIO GPU are set in the QEMU startup script, originally included in the image. And finally, build the AGL KVM demo image. Okay, so prepar uh, preparation of the AGL image is now complete. Next, I will boot the build BATO.io AGL image on cloud and check it. Unlike the previous step, I will use G5G Metal as an instance for verification. A normal instance of AWS is already a VM launched on AWS hypervisor and a nested virtualization to launch QEMU on top of it is not allowed. 
Therefore, I use G5G metal, which is a bare metal instance that does not run AWS hypervisor and have a Arch64 architecture. Metal instances are available in a limited number of regions, so please check the AWS site. For the first step of the verification, create a developer account that depends, uh, belongs to the Sudo and KVM groups, and use this account to work with this instance from now on. First, build QEMU, then install package for GUI connection to the cloud instance. Once the package are installed, connect to the cloud again, forwarding the port for RDP communication. Launch any RDP client on the local PC and connect to the forward port to connect to the remote desktop on the cloud. We will work with uh, uh, this remote desktop from now on in order to check the graphic of the developed AGL. Now let's check the Bat.io AGL on cloud. So first, copy the image built in the previous step to the verify instance with SCP. Since we have built two images, make a copy of each and specify one them to uh, uh, specify one of them when QEMU starts. Here is what Quillback looks like when activated in cloud. Open setting and check AGL version and kernel version. And this is Lightfish. The AGL and kernel version is different from Quillback. Okay, once satisfied with the image developed in the cloud, we proceed to the final step. So first, uh, download the Bat.io AGL image built with cloud and the image for Raspberry Pi to your local PC. Copy the images for Raspberry Pi to the SD card with the DD command. It took few minutes in my environment. And here is an image for Raspberry Pi booted from the SD card. Two VMs are running. One is instrument cluster, and another is Azure Western image. As a last step, we deploy the Bat.io Azure image that we have confirmed to work in cloud to edge. In general deployment, over-the-air update is performed. But this time, since it is tutorial, the Bat.io AGL image is transferred by SCP. Next, uh, switch the service running AGL image Western to Quillback Bat.io AGL service and restart Raspberry Pi board. Quillback Bat.io AGL image is launched and the same AGL version and kernel version as confirmed in cloud can be confirmed. Now that uh, we have confirmed Quillback, <coughs> so next step is to check Lightfish. And also we confirmed that Lightfish has the same AGL version and kernel version as cloud. Okay, so this is uh, my last uh, slide. Here is a summary of what I have shown you. Uh, to start, we built Bat.io AGL images of Quillback and Lightfish in cloud. There are different kernel versions. Next, uh, we checked the operating uh, <coughs> operation of the built Bat.io AGL image on cloud. And finally, we run Quillback Bat.io AGL on Edge and then update it to Lightfish. From this tutorial, we can see that Bat.io provides binary parity in Cloud and Edge. 
We also confirmed that it works fine on BART I.O. interface, even if the guest kernel is different. It should be noted that although BART I.O. abstracts the device as described in this session, uh, the physical resource limitation of the hardware still exists. The Raspberry Pi has little uh, memory and a non-powerful CPU, therefore it is difficult to run heavy image or additional VMs. For this reason, this tutorial is not a simple a sample of more complex SDV development, but I hope it will help you understand how to use BATIO in AGL and cloud-native SDV development. Okay. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> so, any questions? Uh, Uh, so, in your diagram of the Raspberry Pi, yes. the, yes, uh, yeah. oh. the QEMU is still described even though Raspberry Pi is a ARM64 um, architecture. So, why the QEMU is required? Uh, sorry, could you say that again, last phrase? Ah, yeah. The, uh, I, 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 I think the QEMU in the cloud side is required to support the ARM64 architecture on the x86 architecture. Uh, but uh, in the right side, in the real target, the Raspberry Pi has the ARM64 architecture. Yes. So why the architecture simulator, emulator QEMU is required? Okay, so... Uh I use a uh, G5C Metal instance for the verification phase, and um, yes, so <coughs> this G5G Metal is uh, a x64 architecture, and so that is <coughs> easy to emulate and use a KVM uh, extension. Uh, is that okay? Uh, sorry, I, think I, I can't understand that the, what is the role of the QEMU in the, on the Raspberry Pi? On the Raspberry Pi, so <coughs> the QEMU is uh, one of the hypervisor role in H, also cloud. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, could you change the word? Uh, why, why? Yeah, so the QEMU, as you know, it's not virtual, it's the hypervisor. It's uh, the architecture emulator. Yes. QEMU is architecture emulator, yes. And uh, what is the question? So on the Raspberry Pi, yes. the, the what is the role of the QEMU and why it is required? Could you say that again? Yeah. 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 So, uh, this is a uh, tutorial for the uh, BART IO related topics. And the uh, AGL has a uh, KVM demonstration target, so it is easy to uh, launch the virtual environment. So I use uh, QEMU. Can I ask one more question? Yes. Okay. In the, on the Raspberry Pi, what kind, uh, you on, uh, 
don't you add the hypervisor? The you only uh, use the QEMU for the hypervisor. So I I imagine that uh, you might use the Open Synergy hypervisor on yeah. the Raspberry Pi because the, your company have that hypervisor. Yeah. So is there no hypervisor on the Raspberry Pi? Uh, uh, so so do you ask why uh, I didn't use a as a hypervisor in on Raspberry Pi? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> はい。ラズベリーパイではまずハイパーファイザー使ってないんですねって確認したいらしい。あ、わかりました。あ、sorry、okay、so、uh、I Okay, so thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, so that's all for my presentation. Thank you.